Hello. In this video, we will be discussing load testing, which is also called performing a loaded voltage drop test. Load testing is another way to test a circuit for excessive resistance that may cause a component not to operate or to operate improperly. We'll also discuss some of the differences between performing a load test and checking for resistance with a DVOM. One of the differences between load testing and checking resistance with a DVOM is that when checking resistance with a DVOM, the circuit is isolated. When performing a load test, the circuit must be complete. One of the advantages of load testing is that we test the vehicle circuits from the power source to the ground. In this example, we will be performing a load test on a rear window defrost grid. The same concepts can be applied to other components. To perform a normal resistance check on this circuit, we would disconnect the BJB and component connector to isolate the power circuit. When we connect the DVOM leads to either side of the circuit, the meter uses a small amount of current to compare the difference between the red and black leads. It uses this to determine the amount of resistance present in the circuit. Sometimes, a poor connection or damaged circuit will allow the small current load from the DVOM to pass through without problems. When a higher load is applied, like when powering the component, the circuit may not be sufficient. In this case, the excessive resistance is only present when the circuit is loaded, and it cannot be detected with a regular resistance check. To load test the defrost grid power and ground circuit, we need to install a suitable load, then test the voltage drop across it to make sure that the load is using all of the voltage in the circuit. Poor pin fit, damaged wires, corroded ground, or even a faulty BJB can cause excessive resistance that uses up voltage. To load test the defrost grid power and ground circuit, we need to test the voltage drop across a substitute load while voltage is present on the circuit. We don't need to isolate the circuit like when checking resistance. Use the existing power and ground connections to test them at the same time. First, we will disconnect the defrost grid power and ground connectors. Before installing your test setup, check the pin fit of the connector using the appropriate flex probe. If you identify a concern, repair the connector or replace the pigtail and reevaluate the vehicle concern. We'll use a light bulb as our substitute load. To choose the appropriate bulb for your circuit, refer to the chart on the next slide. Take a screenshot or picture of this chart for future reference. It is important to use the correct light bulb when load testing a circuit. Too small or too large of a load will cause inconclusive test results. Before installing our substitute load to perform the load test, we need to determine how much voltage drops across our test leads. To do this, we will connect our test setup directly to the vehicle battery and test voltage drop at the bulb. With battery voltage at 12.6 volts and our test results at 12.3 volts, that means our test leads are consuming 0.3 volts. We will need to account for this when testing on the vehicle. Here on our test vehicle, we have done the same test. With the test leads connected directly to the vehicle battery, voltage drop is about 14.8 volts. Battery voltage at the time of this test was 15.1 volts. With a voltage drop of 14.8, our test leads are consuming 0.3 volts. Record this number for future calculations. Here, we are installing the test leads and light bulb setup into the defrost grid power and ground circuits. Now that the circuit is complete, we can test it. If the circuit is not hot at all times, we need to turn it on. In this case, we can use the defrost button in the vehicle with the key on, or active command the rear defrost grid on. Install your voltmeter on either side of the circuit to test the voltage drop. The circuits for the bulb should consume less than 0.2 volts each, so full battery voltage, within half a volt, should be dropping across the bulb. In this example, our load is consuming 12 volts because we know our test leads consume 0.3 volts and battery voltage is 12.6 volts, we can determine our circuits are consuming 0.3 volts, which is within the limit of half a volt. Back to our test vehicle. We activated the circuit by turning on the rear defrost grid and the bulb illuminated. When testing voltage across the bulb, we measured right around 14 volts. At the time of this test, battery voltage was 14.8. If we subtract our test lead voltage drop of 0.3 volts, then subtract our current test results of 14 volts, we know our circuits are consuming 0.5 volts. 
Any more than this, and we would want to investigate for the source of excessive resistance. Only apply power for long enough to record a voltage measurement. Powering the bulb for extended periods of time may damage test leads and will allow the bulb to heat up, which could cause damage or personal injury. If there is a low voltage drop across the bulb, that means that voltage is being used up by the power or ground side of the circuit. In this example, our bulb is only consuming 8 volts. With a battery voltage of 12.6 volts and test lead volt drop of 0.3 volts, that means excessive resistance in the circuit is consuming 4.3 volts. To isolate the excessive resistance, try providing a known good power or ground source to the bulb and retesting. It is important to use a DVOM to confirm your test results. A bulb only consuming 10 volts may still appear bright when more than 2 volts are being consumed by resistance in the circuit. Back on our test car, we performed another load test. Battery voltage was at 14.8 volts, but voltage drop across our test setup was only 7.1 volts. If we account for our 0.3 volt drop from the test leads, we can determine that the circuit is consuming 7.4 volts. Note that the bulb still lit up brightly, but measuring voltage drop indicates that there is high resistance in the circuit that could cause a module or a component to malfunction. In part 1, we demonstrated how to perform a loaded voltage drop test by substituting a component for a light bulb as the load in a circuit. In today's video, we will be demonstrating how to perform a loaded voltage drop test by back probing the connector using the component to load the circuit. This is especially helpful for higher amperage circuits where a light bulb does not provide sufficient load to identify high resistance in a circuit. The topics we will review are how to identify weatherproof and non-weatherproof connectors, how to properly back probe a connector, and how to load test a component by back probing it. To find information on performing load testing and back probing connectors, refer to the workshop manual, section 100-00, general information, description and operation, diagnostic methods. You can see that using a voltage drop measurement is more accurate than checking available voltage for higher current circuits. It is important to practice the correct back probing technique and to use an appropriate probe to avoid connector damage. You can access the Rotunda Technician Tool Program website from the Rotunda homepage. From here, search for Back Probe to view several probe options. Your dealership's VCMM kit also includes a set of back probes for use with the VCMM oscilloscope and voltmeter functions. Here is an example of a connector with no weather pack. The wires enter the back of the connector and wire insulation ensures a tight fit to prevent damage and debris intrusion. Here is one example of a weather tight connector. The orange hard rubber seals between the wires and the connector are referred to as weather pack. If this weather pack is damaged, it can allow moisture into the connector, which will cause terminal corrosion and eventually electrical faults. Here is a second example of a weather tight connector. In addition to weather pack, similar to the previous example, there is an additional rubber seal to prevent debris and moisture intrusion. First, we will demonstrate back probing the connector with no weather pack. Adjust your probe so that it is parallel against the wire you are back probing, and hold tension in this direction while you push the probe into the back of the connector. If you made contact with the terminal, you will feel the probe stop. Next, we will back probe a weather tight connector. Use the same method, keeping the probe parallel with the wire and pushing the probe into the back of the connector until you feel it stop. If performed correctly, the wire insulation nor the weather pack should have been nicked, torn, or otherwise damaged. Here's one more demonstration. Look closely. The probe is pointing away from the green and orange wire slightly. This causes the probe to miss the terminal and push through. In this case, there was not a good connection. The technician will attempt again 
keeping tension on the probe to keep it parallel to the green and orange wire. This time, he feels the probe stop against the back of the terminal pin, indicating a good connection has been made. To verify your back probe made a good connection, check continuity from your back probe to the connector pin. You should also check pin fit using a flex probe. As you can see, you may have to adjust your back probe to make a good contact, especially on weathertight connectors. When you confirm there is continuity between the pin and back probe, remove your flex probe, carefully reconnect the connector, and proceed with the test. Now that we know how to back probe a connector, let's employ that technique to perform a load test. We will back probe the defrost grid power and ground circuits to measure the voltage the defrost grid is consuming. As discussed in the previous video, the component should be using almost all of the available voltage, indicating there is no other resistance in the circuit. First, the defrost grid power circuit is back probed. Next, the ground circuit. Once good back probe connections are obtained, connect the probes to your voltmeter. Activate the component you're testing, in this case the defrost grid, and record the voltage reading. This test vehicle had no concerns and the rear defrost grid was operating properly, with battery voltage at 14.3 volts and the defrost grid dropping 13.3 volts the power and ground circuits combined were consuming approximately one volt. Here's the same test on a vehicle with the concern that the rear defrost does not operate properly. When we back probe the defrost grid circuits, we see that it is only consuming 6.83 volts, significantly less than the 14.3 volts available at the battery. Here's how that looks on a wiring diagram. We know that there is 14.3 volts available at the battery, and our test indicates that the defrost grid is using less than half of that available voltage. Because we performed this test, we can avoid unnecessary component replacement and investigate the cause of excessive resistance in the defrost grid power and ground circuits further. This video will quickly show how to load test a circuit using a voltage bridge, which utilizes a test light with an incandescent bulb, a DVOM, and the leads that come in your Rotunda Flux Probe Kit. If you do not have the leads from the Flux Probe Kit, there is another way to take these measurements, which will be shown at the end of the video. A load test is loading a complete circuit or an individual wire with the component that draws amperage through the wire. This is usually accomplished with an incandescent bulb. Then, the voltage drop on that wire can be measured accurately, giving you a real reading than just having the static reading. The static reading would be done with just key on engine off on an open-ended wire, drawing no amperage. This is the difference between static and dynamic voltage readings. The specification for this is a half a volt or less when compared to battery voltage, meaning if the voltage drop on a wire is greater than a half of a volt, then the circuit is damaged and needs to be repaired. Load testing is done all the time, especially when a pinpoint test is followed and a component is replaced, but the concern is still present. In a pinpoint test, the documentation typically has you test for 12 volt static voltage and for resistance less than 3 ohms. Typically, we can get 3 or less ohms and 12 volt static voltage with just a strand of copper, but a strand of copper will not allow normal operation once it is actually placed under a load. This is why this test is so important. Test light needs to have an amperage load of 250 to 350 milliamps, which must have an incandescent bulb. LED test lights will not be within the specification. As shown here, all lights we are using are within this specification, besides the third one showing 160 milliamps. This will be used as an example to show how incorrect equipment can cause a poor circuit to actually pass this test. A 4 watt bulb is ideal as it will get you close to the 350 milliamp spec. 
Most test lights will have replaceable bulbs. The amperage readings previously shown were taken using a tool at our local training center. But to do this at your bay, place the DVOM in DC amperage and place the test light in series with the positive lead and use the vehicle's battery for your voltage source. The ground lead can be a normal chassis ground. Again, ensure the reading is between 250 to 350 milliamps. In this example shown here, we're using 12.65 voltage supply and two 12 volt circuits. One is a direct line to the pigtail and pin two goes through an in-series two ohm resistor. As the pictures show, all four readings will technically pass a pinpoint test. As you can see, the known good wire without the in-series resistance shows 12.59 volts, which is only a six hundredth of a difference from the initial static reading. Now looking at the in-series resistor reading, this shows 12 volts even, which is about six tenths of a voltage drop difference compared to battery voltage. This circuit failed the test and needs to be repaired. If this was not done, the pinpoint test may have led to component replacement and the concern would still be present. We recommend to make this bridge test a regular practice during your normal diagnostics. This is because the convenience of this test is that we are not adding any additional steps to a pinpoint test or probing weather sealed connectors or using separate bulbs with leads. Those examples can be intrusive to do most times. In this example, we are simply bridging the test light across your meter. The reading we are about to take here is taken across both the power and ground circuits for the left hand fog lamp on this 2017 Super Duty, meaning we are testing two wires at once in one spot. As you can see, the voltage drops significantly more than a half of a volt. However, if this test were to pass, then you just isolated both the power and ground at the same time and the bulb could then be replaced to resolve the customer's concern. Since the test did fail, we need to figure out which wire is at fault. So the next step is to test the individual wires to determine which one's at fault. When testing a power supply circuit, jump your ground lead to a chassis ground. When testing a ground or a return circuit, jump your own fused 12 volt supply from the battery. In this case, the power wire had excessive resistance. Please note, we never had to isolate the circuit and measure end to end to find out the wire had bad resistance. This was all done in one spot on the vehicle. For those of you who do not have the flex probe leads, you can place your test light in a manner such as what is shown in the diagram. As long as the bridge is in place in series with the wire in question, it is a good test. It is just simply more convenient to install the bridge at the multimeter.